Remember Catherine Clark, the Massachusetts Congresswoman that called on the FBI to make Gamergate their priority, officially backed Zoe Quinn's congressional briefing, and uh, more recently introduced to Congress what Mother Jones described as an anti-Gamergate bill? And remember that Law and Order SVU episode, which was so ridiculous in demonizing gamers that even social justice warriors officially denounced it? Well, it turns out that Catherine Clark might have actually played a role in having that monstrosity made. If we look at the website for the Center of Law, Brain, and Behavior, we see two names listed at the top. Neil Bear and Catherine Clark. We know who Catherine Clark is, but who's Bear? It reads, Emmy winning executive producer and writer, ER, Law and Order SVU, and Under the Dome. Oh, so he's an executive producer and writer for Law and Order Special Victims Unit, and apparently has been since 2002. Health and social policy issues must be explored on television, dramas, because dramas are reflections of the day-to-day -day struggles in our lives. But does presenting stories about the complex issues facing us today, like abortion or torture or the plight of child soldiers, make a difference? Is there a way to dramatize these issues so that they don't come off as preachy or pedantic? I believe with artful writing, we can weave these issues felicitously into TV episodes because these topics themselves are often controversial and complex. Good TV relishes complexity because we can dramatize the messiness and conflict inherent in social issues through the characters, beliefs, and actions. Facts and figures compiled in policy reports organize the world in ways that make it possible for us to grapple with the complexity of social issues. But do these reports, often piled up on policymakers and Susan Perry's desks, engage us emotionally and, and intellectually in the ways a good movie, novel, painting, or television show can? There's something about watching characters duke it out over their differences that can captivate us like nothing else can. We sit wrapped, not numb or stupefied, as characters battle over the ethical dilemmas of our times. If we can agree that trenchant social issues make for compelling television, then we should strive to tell these stories, even if they are controversial, or if some members of the audience don't believe they're appropriate for the airwaves. Those folks don't have to watch, though we all might be better off if they did. First, we are by nature storytellers. Our brains are wired to tell stories. Think for a moment about how many stories you've already told today to your spouse or partner, to your children, to your colleagues, or to your friends. Stories are the currency of our lives. They are the measure of our days. We are nothing without our stories because stories encapsulate our fears, our failures, our dreams, and our desires. We understand and make sense of our own lives by telling stories about ourselves and others. People who can't tell stories, for example, those afflicted with advanced Alzheimer's disease, are lost to us. So TV dramas are for me more than just an escape from our daily lives. They are touchstones for our emotions. Stories guide us. They are ways for us to make sense out of all the facts and figures and arguments we hear about, things like the climbing teenage pregnancy rate in the US, whether abortion should remain legal, or why one out of three women who enters an emergency room in the United States is the victim of domestic violence. Stories shake us up, make us see other points of view through characters we can identify with. And if the show is really good, we continue to think about it, turning it over in our minds, savoring it. Maybe we even th uh, begin to think about things a little differently from the way we had thought about them before. So it turns out Neil Brer is a huge social justice proponent and basically says that we should attempt to sneak propaganda into TV and film at every opportunity so that we can make society a better place. And he's been so devoted to the cause of inserting propaganda into films and recruiting others to do so that he's been involved in multiple organizations that set out to promote this. He founded a propaganda advocacy group known as Action Lab and is director of the Global Media Center for Social Impact. And in an event Neil hosted, which attempted to lure physicians to be propagandists for social change, he described himself as a pediatrician and television writer who combines his passion for medicine and storytelling to challenge audiences' views on a spectrum of social and political topics. 
Further down we read, he recently established the Center for Storytelling, Activism, and Health at USC's Institute for Global Health. So it's clear to see that this guy has a serious agenda to push. And not only does he brag about how he inserts political propaganda into every piece of media that he produces, but he feels it's necessary to recruit everyone else around him to do the same thing. But the funny thing about it, his anti-gamer propaganda for SVU was so over the top, so incredibly unbelievable, that he completely and utterly failed in his mission to indoctrinate the public. But let's focus back on Clark for a minute. Why do I suspect that she asked Bear to make this episode? Well, because there's undisputable evidence that Clark has been using the Center for Law, Brain, and Behavior, where she's on the advisory board with Bear, specifically to promote her anti-gamer agenda. It's clear to see. Gamers face some very influential enemies in this political climate. Swinging in the backyard, pull up in my fast car, whistling in your neck. Open up a beer, come over here, let's play a video game. You're in my favorite sundress, watching you get undressed. Play a video game, game. 